Born in 1971 in Havana, Cuba, Juan Roberto Diago de Ruthi began exploring issues of racial discrimination early in his career, relying on graffiti to express anger and pain. To him, this history did not refer to personal autobiographical accounts, but rather to the untold stories of black communities in Cuba, including his own neighborhood of Pogoloti, whose near marginal status resembled living like a maroon, an African in the Caribbean who had escaped slavery, whose existence embodied the peculiarity of being both free and outcast from society. This ethos underscores unresolved tensions within a disenfranchised population due to their race and cultural heritage, despite socialist Cuba's attempts at eradicating racial discrimination. The visibility that the black population had gained in Cuba post-1959 came with a price, the hiding rather than the healing of their scars and the silencing of their voices. In the large painting, Untitled, from the series Wounds 2015, Roberto Diago has covered the canvas with a thick layer of black paint. The resulting flatness of the picture plane is broken only by two vertical overtures in the form of long slashes on the top left and center right sections of the painting. The cuts look like open wounds of intense red and white, as the title of the series suggests. Turned into tissues of flesh and fat, the hues create a sense of depth that transform the painting into a massive body, which propels the black to the foreground. The black background, or as one may be tempted to say, black ground, only becomes visible through the dramatic exposure of its wounds. The group exhibition Keloids One, held at the House of Africa in Havana in 1997, was a turning point for artists of African descent in Cuba. In Cuba, the word keloid denotes the raised scars of whipped slaves and the protuberances of scarred or burned skinned, mostly among black people. It was the first exhibition to address the issue of racism in the context of a social revolution that claimed to have solved it. Harsh living conditions precipitated by the economic crisis following the collapse of the Soviet Union, which had provided a financial lifeline to the Castro regime for nearly a decade, highlighted how the socialist doctrine produced only cosmetic changes to centuries-old racism. It is Diago's sensibility toward the materiality of painting that provides a deeper understanding of his work. In Untitled, from the series The Power of Your Soul, 2013, he meticulously glues patches of fabric onto the canvas or linen. He repeats the same procedure in many other works. The patches are irregular, and sometimes they become strips ranging from wide to slender, even to threads, all held together by glue. By doing this, Diago equates the porosity of fabric to that of skin. In another series, The Skin That Talks, 2014, Diago uses patches in black, white, or both. This time, they are sewn to one another, but never fully integrated into one piece. Knotted threads and ropes are visible. Yet here, too, Diago refers to the black skin through the notion of the keloid. Depicted in Diago's paintings through knotted threads and ropes, keloids also appear in his metal works in the form of welding and the resulting seams. In the series Variations of Ogun, the Afro-Caribbean god of metals, Diago welds plates of scrap metal from containers to assemble pieces reminiscent of colorful patchwork. As a metaphor, welding implies the pain of scarification 
through the transformation of metal. Rough surfaces undergo a process of melting through fire. Forging is pain, yet it also yields beauty. Ascending City fills the gallery space with a sprawling installation of burned wooden boxes, forming mounts of varying heights that clutter the floor and climb the antiseptic white walls. Evoking ghostly African villages burned by radical Boko Haram, or abandoned shanty towns in Cuba, or neglected communities in the United States, or marginalized populations elsewhere, the installation is a metaphor of living communities made unlivable. Fire makes them all look the same, black, which is to say, poignantly beautiful in their difficult peculiarity.